Just me and you. Let's have a day of honesty. Truly, as a Jazz fan, what is your pain tolerance? What are you willing to have as your pain tolerance as a Utah Jazz fan? We discuss it next on Locked on Jazz. You are Locked on Jazz, your daily podcast on the Utah Jazz. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. How are you? I'm David Locke, radio voice of the Utah Jazz, Jazz NBA insider on today's edition of Locked On Jazz. We're going to, you and I, are going to have a discussion about what we really think our pain tolerance is as Jazz fans. What are we willing to actually go through in a quest for a championship and a rebuild. The in-season tournament is a raging success. We'll discuss that, and then we'll preview the Memphis game, as well as the Jazz head to Memphis tonight. We also have our new games on the schedule. We'll discuss all of that. Uh, This is Locked on Jazz, your daily podcast on the Utah Jazz, giving you insight, expertise, geeky numbers, and hopefully making it way better to be a Jazz fan each and every day. Thank you so much for making Locked on Jazz your first listen of the day. We are free. We are available on all podcasting apps as well as on YouTube. And I thank you so much for being a part of the show. I am David Locke, the radio voice of Utah Jazz, Jazz NBA insider. And we hope this makes it a better experience to be a Jazz fan each and every day. That's our goal to the everydayers. You're the best. Thank you so much for those of you on your first listen of the day. Thank you for making Locked on Jazz your first listen of the day. Uh, Thank you for tuning in. I do greatly appreciate it. I appreciate all your, your guys' support. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel make every moment more $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team visit visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. All right. We do have new games on the schedule. We will go on the road December 6th with the in-season tournament. There was a week. They only scheduled 80 games this year. So there were eight, two more games that need to be put on the schedule. Um, and it was depending if you made the Elite Eight of the in-season tournament, then you were going to play your games there. And if not, then you're going to play uh, your games. And the way it turned out, we will play uh, we will play the Memphis Grizzlies, or excuse me, we will play the Dallas Mavericks in Dallas on Wednesday. So from a fan standpoint, you get to see Luka. Your other choice was probably seeing Victor. But those teams that went 0-4 in in-season tournament play got punished. And San Antonio has to play an interconference game against Chicago. Uh, I think it is. And then we're coming back home. We get a Friday night game, which is super fun, against, and it's an ESPN game, if you care, uh, against the LA Clippers. So that'll be, um, and that's, you know, hard. And so from a Jazz fan standpoint, this kind of is a big win. You get Luka for a night where you can watch the Jazz on Jazz Plus or however you want to watch the Jazz um, or on KJS. And then, or listen to it with me and Ron. And then Friday night, you get Harden and uh, all those guys coming into town uh, to see the Clippers, who I watched in a late game watch last night. So um, kind of, I think that's a good setup uh, for the Jazz. And then for us, as traveling, it's uh, I, I think we expected to play Wednesday at home and travel Friday, but then I would have been stuck in Oklahoma City for like two days waiting to play on the 11th in Oklahoma City. So this is back home. We get a Saturday at home all by ourselves and then leave Sunday to go to Oklahoma City. The last time in Oklahoma City is a win. Um, so that was good. All right. Uh, this is an easier conversation to have today because the Jazz have won two in a row. And everyone feels good right now. But prior to that, when we gotten blown out in back-to-back games against uh, the Lakers and then that disastrous performance in Portland, it struck me. And maybe this is just, you know, immediate reaction and YouTube comments and things like that. But I'm curious on what our pain tolerance is as as a as a fan base, because it seems to me. And I could be wrong on this, and I understand it, actually, because last year, like we had this we had zero pain last year. We went into year one of the rebuild and we had zero pain. We had this magically fun year where we were ahead of everything. Uh, we found Lowry marketing. We found Walker Kessler. We, it, 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 it was, it was truly a marvelous, marvelous year. We won a ton of games early when we thought we weren't going to be good. 
fans all the time were in my comment section saying this is the most fun year they've ever had, which was a laughable concept, but that's how it felt like at the moment. There's no question that's how it felt at the moment. Um, and then we traded Mike Conley, and then we fell apart at the end, and I think everyone kind of understood it. Like, yeah, okay, that's what it was. And then we went to the draft, and we picked three draft picks, and it felt like it was it was truly a painless, painless year. It seems to me that the painless year has to some extent made us forget that it was only September of 2022. So that's 14 months ago. Now 15. We'll call it December. 15 months ago that we traded Donovan. And only 15 months ago we traded Boyer. Yeah. And only 16 months ago, really, we traded Rudy. And our first 16 months was painless. And frankly, it's still painless. 6 and 11 is painless. I'm stunned we're 6 and 11 right now. Give credit to these guys for pulling off those last two wins and kind of swinging the way everything feels. But it's interesting to me, and I, I, you know, this is probably something where I should have done it as a live show where we're having chat back and forth. And, I, and I'm curious your comments in the, in the comments section or hit me on Twitter at DLock09 or X, I guess. Like, what is it we're willing to do? Oklahoma City did this. They pulled the plug. They're the model franchise right now of how you rebuild Sam Presti. So they went 22 games. They then won 24 games. They then won 40, and now they're good. So that is two years in which they went 46 and 108. 46 and 108. And similarly, they traded Paul George and got Shea Gilgis Alexander. And then they drafted fabulously around that. They've gotten Jet Holmgren and they've gotten Jalen Williams. And they have a bunch of, and they picked up Josh Giddy with one of those picks. Um, and they have a cadre of a million draft picks, and they're they're the model on on how you do this. They did it in a similar fashion where they traded one of their best players and then they they picked up from there. Are we willing to do that for two years? Are you willing to go for two years of 20 wins starting now? Like, which would mean, by the way, that we have to go about 10 and 50 the rest of the season, which I just don't like think we're willing to do. The Houston Rockets traded all their pieces to change their coach, went 17 and 55, 20 and 62, and 22 and 60. So they went 59 and 179. 59 and 179. They're now 8 and 7. Are we willing to do that? They've picked Jalen Green, top three pick. Jabari Smith, top three pick. Did a nice job and got Alfred Shingoon. And now they've added some veterans around it. Do we have that? Do we have a pain tolerance of three years? I don't know who our model is here. Frankly, this is what I think is hard. There is no set model that says, okay, well, if we do this, you get you get to do it. And I don't think Danny's time, you know, everyone says, well, Danny's not young. His timeline's not short. Okay. I mean, when he did it with Doc Rivers, they went 33 and 49, 24 and 58. 50, so they basically went 57 and 110. That's, I'm rounding some numbers. And then they made the big trades, and they won it in the third year, right? Then they had Paul Pierce, their Lowry Market, and they got Ray Allen and Kevin Garnett. I, I mean, that feels like that was a once in a lifetime time for Danny to to jump. His Brad Stevens rebuild was a twenty five win season followed by a forty, so that's pretty short. Is that what we're accept? Is that acceptable? We're we're okay with one, like so. OKC did two, Houston did three twenty win seasons. Danny did it kind of with one and a half each time. The San Antonio Spurs, which are, a, you know, a model franchise, right, with this with Greg Popovich. And they're in the midst of it right now, right? I mean, frankly, they've gotten 32. This is what I don't want. This is what I don't want. They went, they went 32, 33, 34, 
22 with like no dividend on it. Okay, that's beyond my pain tolerance. And they're three and 14 right now. And they have Victor, so everything feels fine. Because they got lucky on the back end and they got Victor. But honestly, like what they've done is what's super unappealing to me. They ran DeMar DeRozan for like two extra years when he actually wasn't a star player, went 32 and 33, then played with DeJounte, then finally cut the court. At least we cut the court. So what is our pain tolerance? Because I don't want to like critique a fan base or critique how you're supposed to be a fan. I, I'm just more curious. But it does, I will say, it does feel to me that our pain tolerance is very low right now. And the fact is, we traded Donovan like 15 months ago and Rudy 16 months ago. And like it feels as though there's a really legit, like we're ahead of the game because we traded those players, right? We could be Detroit. Oh, dear. We could be Detroit. Detroit headed into a rebuild without anything. Blake Griffin was done. They couldn't get anything for him. And Detroit's in the midst of a rebuild. And they're in 20, 20, 23, 17, and now have lost like 13 straight or 2 and 15. Right? Like, oh, God. And they've had a number one pick. And they got a pretty good pick in Jaden Ivey. And they got a pretty good pick in Monsieur Thompson. And they're still terrible. But, I mean, they literally have gone 80 and, like, 240 for four years and are now 2 and 15. That's five years. That That's that's a lot of the pain tolerance. But they started with zero. Right? So here's the various, like, little levels here. Detroit starts with zero. They're in the fifth year of their rebuild. Oklahoma City did something similar to us. They got Shea Gilgis Alexander and then had a bunch of draft picks. And they went for two years and now are good in the third year of this. Shea's better than Lowry and probably will continue to be. Shea's top 10 player in the NBA. So they really, I mean, they fleeced. Fleeced the Clippers on that trade because Shea's probably better than Paul George. And they got all the picks. Um, I don't know if anyone knew that. So they went two years and then went 500. Houston went three years. They traded hard and they had some people. They've, they've gotten three draft picks. They probably don't have the piece, though. And then they punted. Then they said, we're going to veterans now. That's enough. And their draft position is such they have to do that. So this is super interesting. Like, what do we have two years of 20 wins in us? Or do we want another? Like, are we more fired up when we go beat the Pelicans? And compete like we did. Now, I, I think Will Hardy's doing the right things. You know, I'm not saying tank in any way, shape, or form. You got to build the culture and you got to do it right. I'm just curious what you think our pain tolerance is. I will right, we'll continue on that. We're just getting started. The in season tournament's been a raging success. We'll talk about that. We'll preview the Memphis Grizzlies game uh, as well for you on that on this Wednesday edition of Locked on Jazz. Today's show is brought to you by my good friends over at Intercap Lending. Intercap Lending is the number one loan. Uh, Lending office of Locked On is our official Locked On lending office for you, but really it's Steve Carter we're talking about. Steve Carter is our all star. He's our guy. He's our he's our number one guy in the process. He makes us roll, and that's what makes Intercap so great. Is their incredible customer service. So if you are in the market for a loan right now, I I, I feel your pain. It's not an easy time. I'm I'm there. Um, I'm I'm with you on this one. I've talked to Steve a few times recently and trying to figure out what's to do best. You need someone to navigate the, the landscape with you, put you in the best positions as the world continues to evolve, hopefully in your favor. Make sure you have the flexibility to jump all over it and get your situation to be better. And that's what Steve Carter can do for you. So visit Steve. Email me at dlock09 at gmail.com. That's dlock09 at gmail.com. And we'll get you taken care of. We'll, I'll set you up with Steve Carter with a personal uh, locked-on introduction with Steve, and you can be uh, get the VIP treatment that you deserve and you get by being a part of the everydayers of Locked On over at Intercap Lending with Steve Carter. Today's show is also brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel.com slash locked on is your answer to get into the game and play and have make every moment more. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app's easy to use, wide-ranging betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on 
and the FanDuel Sportsbook uh, is available for you as well. You can decide you want to get in on the action on the uh, play-in tournament. The Boston Celtics are the favorite right now. Uh, I think Milwaukee's second. Interesting, Sacramento is the favorite out of the West because of the fact that Phoenix and L.A. are playing each other in that opening uh, game, and so it's def- hurting their odds. Uh, so keep an eye on that one. By the way, Jazz tonight are a four-and-a-half-point underdog against the Memphis Grizzlies. The 3-11 and Memphis Grizzlies, who Marcus Smart is screaming at, are a four-and-a-half-point favorite against the Jazz. Is that nuts? We'll talk about that coming up here in a little bit as well. That's all with our friends over at FanDuel.com slash locked up. We'll preview that Grizzlies game coming up here in just a little bit. Uh, it is the in-season tournament is a raging success, so we'll touch on that um, as well. So I'm curious, by the way, to our last conversation of what your pain tolerance is. I think my the, the reason I bring this up, I, I think last year gave us a feeling it was going to be easy. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, and that we, we're really, we're in the roads for this kind of fun, exciting growth. The fact of the matter is, everything's gone pretty perfectly for us at this point in this. We've gotten a top 30 player in the NBA in Lowry marketing through a trade. We got Walker Kessler through a trade who it feels to me is going to be a viable piece to an NBA. You know, Will and those guys only talk about championships. So uh, a championship puzzle um, that they talk about as a, is a real piece of a championship puzzle. I think he's, I don't know, you know, I don't know what the set, the, the hesitation, if you're hearing it, is I actually don't know what a center is in um, the NBA in a championship puzzle. That that's literally kind of what my question mark is here of what we're at, what I, what you're filling in on that gap is like. So what like does a center play 30 minutes a night? Does a center play 22 minutes a night? I mean, I think we've seen the last few nights just even the having a seven footer out there actually does make a really really big difference. Like I think that actually matters um, with York Saban and and uh, Walker back, our defense looks better. We're denying the rim better. Like those things actually really, really matter. But I think back to my point is I think, you know, we've, we're way ahead. Like you've gotten Lowry marketing, who seems to be really good. Um, he's a top 30 player in the NBA. You have Walker Kessler, who's a piece that you picked up in the trade. Keontae George looks every bit to be a piece. He's a 16th pick. I don't think, I don't know if he's going to be a franchise. Like so far, everything's perfect. You're going, I have to have a top 10 player, a top 20 player, a top 50 player by the time you're done. Like, if you're going to win big in this league, you have to have a top 10, a top 20, and a top 50 player in the NBA. And, like, how we're getting those, like, think about that. That takes real time. Like, Oklahoma City has Shea. And then there's a chance Chet becomes a top 20 player in the NBA. And then they then they go in, then they have a chance. It's because Jalen Williams is certainly a top 50 player. Then they've got their three. Then they have to hold it together. Houston... They don't have a top 10. They don't have a top 20. They might have a top 50 if Jabari Smith comes around or if Jalen Green comes around or if Alfred Shingun hits top 50. He might. But as of that moment, like, they've done this for three years and they don't have a 10, 20, or a 50. So it's interesting to me, and maybe I'm just kind of preached, maybe I'm talking to an audience that, that, that isn't engaged on this, for all I know. But to me, that's... A, kind of a super interesting conversation for us all to have is like, what is our pain tolerance? Because the fact of the matter is it's gone perfectly for us. And I still see a long and winding road ahead of us. It's kind of my point. And I don't necessarily know that year one gave us that sensation of feeling that way. I think that year one might've given us a feeling that we had the exact opposite that we're, that we're able to go, that this is going to be e- that we're the Utah Jazz and we have Danny Ainge, so this can be easy. There's nothing easy about this. All right, the in season tournament's a raging success. Well done by the NBA. The courts and all the other stuff was wacky and fun, but the fact of the matter is the competition was great. Last night was wild. People were engaged. I'm assuming TV ratings were way up. Uh, social media activity was through the roof last night, and now and this is before we get to this eight game matchup. And then I think, like, the only thing I would say is, like, we just watched the Pelicans not look very good in there in the tournament, which is too bad. You'd probably rather have a, a better team. But, frankly, Sacramento or the Pelicans are going to the NBA Cup, and their fan bases haven't won anything in a long time 
because by the way, because they play each other in the eight, so they're going to go to the final. One of those two teams is in Vegas. They haven't won anything in a long, long time. So those fan bases are going to be engaged. This is exactly what Adam Silver hoped would happen. Is that you'd end up with fan bases like, hey, if we frankly were in the NBA Cup, we'd be really in. If Memphis was in the NBA Cup, they'd be really in. Most franchises haven't won anything. And Adam Silver's belief in this was that if we could create something for for some for fan bases to get another win or another chance to win, that it, it would be a win. What I think has happened more so than anyone thought of is the players bought it. Players going to the huddles and asking what the point differential was. Players knowing what's on the line. The games felt different. The uniforms are different. The court felt different. The intensity level was really high in most of these games. We put out a dog in, in L.A., but uh, most most of these games had super high intensity level. Um, and last night, they certainly did. Um, and then Sacramento came back to win despite only needing, you know, they weren't going to like just not try to win the game. That was an incredible game last night. So I think you really saw this as a massive success of adding some intrigue in November. Now, the question is, how do you tweak it? I prefer, I would say the one thing I would prefer is that we did everything inside divisions. That our group was our division. And you increase divisional rivalries inside your division. I, I think that would be a step. The other thing, because the best complaint I've heard from people, and I still think this is true, Last night, I'm checking the in-season tournament tab at NBA.com trying to figure out who's in what group. There, there's no logic to who's in what group. And so, therefore, I think as and, – and they're trying to do it out of fairness, but I, I would just do it by division. And then you won your group – division group play actually has a little something to it because you beat the teams. And maybe it's the fifth straight time you've won that. I, I, I think there's some value to the groups being the same every single time. Now, when we go to 32 teams, you just have, you're going to have to change it up. but. For right now, I would that would be my first tweak of this. The second question is whether or not there's any value to extending the in-season tournament another game or two so that the point differential is not as drastic and not as weird as it was last night. Joe Missoula certainly pushed us over the edge. Like, up 20 playing Hack and Andre Drummond in the middle with eight minutes left in the fourth quarter does feel a little ugly. Joe Missoula pushed this beyond logic. Like, playing the game all the way out for point differential seemed okay. But suddenly playing Hacka Andre Drummond in the middle of the fourth quarter up eight felt like a little bit of a push. The way, if you increase the amount of games, you would lessen the importance of that. So that would be my next question, my next thought. Um, and then otherwise, I think it's great. Like, I don't have a lot of other complaints on this. I think it's been great. I do think it'd be great if it stayed in division. I think it has an impact on the schedule where you're playing more conference teams early and more conference teams late, and we'll see how that, what impact that has over time. Um, and uh, I think that's, so that'll be super interesting um, to watch all that play out. So uh, I think it's a raging success. Interest up. Competition level up. Uniqueness of games up. And now we get the good stuff. The the round of eight, like the single elimination round of eight will be great. I, I'm, I The schedule doesn't look like I feel like we're going to get some bad games in there just because I don't think the matchups are as good as we'd hoped. But that's you can't do anything about that. Like Phil, Sacramento, New Orleans. I don't think I'd be really surprised if that's a good game. Um, and Milwaukee, I think, hammers New York a little bit. But in Boston, hammers Indiana and. Phoenix L Lakers will be good. But I actually think Phoenix is just so much better than L.A. right now. I actually if I would guess. Like, I, I kind of think the four games aren't going to be that good in the eight, which would be too bad. But we get one of them that goes down the wire and is a single elimination, then then, then it's a win. Then it's a big win. So, um, great stuff. All right, we'll preview the Memphis Grizzlies as we continue here for you on uh, Locked on Jazz today. From Memphis, if you can't tell, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm trying to put the city backgrounds um, in the background for you, uh, wherever we are, so you don't see the boring hotel rooms. All right, this is awesome because Locked On and eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Basketball's host, Josh Lloyd, to bring you the perfect eBay guaranteed fit of the week. The eBay guaranteed fit fantasy picks of the week. Josh Lloyd is the number one fantasy basketball host in the country. eBay is the number one spot for you to get your car needs at eBay Motors. And so, therefore, it's the eBay Motors guaranteed fit fantasy pick of the week. Here is what... Josh Lloyd says, Gordon Hayward should be grabbed again. Lamella Ball out with an ankle injury. If Hayward was dropped early, his role is going to increase as a ball handler and others. 
Scoot Henderson has been rocky for a bit, but Scoot is back and his value in minutes are going to rise if you can afford some bad games. He's worth grabbing. And Jaden Ivey, level of in play has improved since joining the starting lineup with the Pistons going nowhere. They'll surely continue to invest time in Jaden Ivey. That's from Josh Lloyd, who's going to help you win your future championship. And eBay Motors knows a championship team is all about the perfect fit. And that's the same with your vehicle. So if you are looking for the perfect fit for for pieces for your vehicle with over 122 million parts. Your number one ride or die, you can make sure your ride stays run smoothly. Brake kits, LED roof rack, bumpers, whatever you need. eBay Motors has it. eBay Motors guaranteed fit. It's guaranteed fit. Ride for the first time, every time, your money back. eBayMotors.com. Thank you very much for making Locked On Jazz your first listen of the day. All right, Jazz and the Grizzlies. Grizzlies are favored, according to FanDuel today, at four and a half, which I think Jazz fans would think crazy, but without Lowry Markin, the two best players on the floor might be Memphis Grizzlies, Desmond Bain and Jaron Jackson Jr. They're both struggling a little bit. It's really interesting to see without the other guys on the team, they're suddenly being asked to do way more than they usually do, and it's obviously having an impact on them. If you look at the work of uh, Jaron Jackson Jr. recently, Jaron Jackson Jr. in the last five games is suddenly shooting 30, averaging 20 points a game because that's what he has to do, but shooting 35% from the floor. 24% from three Desmond Bain is just his numbers are down. Like he's, uh, he's shooting 36% from three, um, 36% from three. Desmond Bain's been nothing over 40% um, in his whole career. The Grizzlies were kind of getting the Grizzlies. I mean, their injuries are crazy, right? So Steven Adams out, Brandon Clark out, Luke Kennard out, Jake Laravia out, Marcus Smart out, Xavier Tillman out. Um, we're, but we are kind of getting them, and they're playing guys like Santi Aldama and Bismack Biombo an awful lot. Um, we're get, I'll, I'll finish that thought finally. We're getting them a little bit where New Orleans got us. I mean, they've lost four in a row, kind of exactly the same thing. They got humiliated at home in their last two games by good teams, Phoenix and Minnesota. They lost 110 to 89 to Phoenix and 119 to 97 to Minnesota. And now they have three days off. Like they, we're walking into a, uh, into a nest tonight. They've lost their last three games by 20 points in all three of them at Houston against Phoenix and Minnesota. And, the, and now, you know, they had three days of practice. And so we get a pride game against Memphis right now. They're 29th in the league offensively. They really, really, really can't score. And so this is going to be vital for us to be as good defensively as we have been the last few nights, because that's where, frankly, the edge is right now, is if we can defend them. Um, they they really struggle. They're 29th in the league offensively. They're 30th in three-point shooting. They're 29th in overall shooting. They're 26th in getting to the free throw line. They, they don't do anything offensively above average. Bain is their best three-point shooter right now, 36%. But, frankly, without Lowry, Desmond Bain and Jaron Jackson are probably the two best players on the floor tonight. They are third best team in the league at forcing turnovers. So we have just got to take care of the ball. We cannot have a 16 turnover half the way we have at times this year in the worst of circumstances. Uh, They have not won a home game this year. They have not won a single home game this year. So really, it is the Jazz walking into this kind of hornet's nest of uh, play shorthanded without Lowry and will be interesting to see whether or not the Grizzlies can, can can come to play the way um, we did against the Pelicans in those two. Um, this is a fan base that is not, is is dealing with pain and wasn't expected to. So that makes it a little interesting. All right, that is Locked on Jazz today. Thanks very much for keeping an eye on us. Thanks very much for staying with it. It is uh, Ron and I will be with you on the call and then from Minnesota tomorrow morning uh, before we play the number one team in the West, the Memphis, the Minnesota Timberwolves led by Rudy Gobert and Mike Conley. Thank you very much for being a part of Locked on. Thank you very much for your support. And uh, interesting comments. I look forward to going back through the um, comment section and uh, seeing what everyone said about pain tolerance. Now we send you to Locked On Sports Today, the first ever 24-7 national sports stream on YouTube. It's all at Locked On Sports Today. Subscribe and hit the bell button. Thanks very much.